Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome. I'd like to go ahead and call this meeting to order. Um, again, welcome everyone that's here today for reports. We have a uh, audit report that we'll be engaging in here shortly. But again, welcome uh, to the meeting today. Hope you all had a great Thanksgiving and ate plenty of food. Time to get back to work and lose some of that now, right? Teresa? Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Whoa, he didn't That's what say she that, told me. That. Oh, we I were talking about it. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Um, first order of business is to the adopt the agenda that's before you. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. Uh, next order of business is the approval of the minutes for your September 28th meeting. Of approval. The uh, minutes, please. All right. Have a motion and a second. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Okay, motion carries. First order of business, um, audit report. Um, Alan, I'll turn it over to you to introduce our... Um, okay. no, thank you, Chairman. Uh, we have with us today from our audit firm, RSM, uh, Linda Murphy, CPA. She's going to give a brief presentation on our tourism development audit and uh, be available to answer any questions that you may have. Okay, great. Thank you. Linda, thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me. She is not unfamiliar to this room. No, she is not. <laughs> Wasn't I just here last week? <laughs> All right. The first thing is that this TDA received a clean opinion, and that is the highest opinion, and that is our opinion on these TDA's financial statements, which was pre prepared by finance, not us. And it's just our, we just opine on the financial statements. And the management's discussion and analysis is a brief synopsis of the actual audit. And it, and it has highlights of the year and, under audit. And it's very good to read, even if you don't it's it's very easy to understand and it starts on page six and you can see on page eight that the total net position which is the assets minus the liabilities was 1.9 million and that was an increase of 19,000 from the year ending june 30th 2016 and the Revenues increased from 16 to 17 by 42,000, and the expenses decreased by 34.5 thousand, and that resulted in the 19 thousand and 64 dollar increase in net position, or if it was a regular business net income. Okay. And that is just, that's the brief overview of the financial statements. Does anyone have any questions about them? Any questions, Randy? That's pretty straightforward. John? I need a motion uh, to, adopt. The chairman, to adopt the audit as it is appropriate. Okay. And <coughs> moving into this year's, I will do that, but moving into this year's, we've already identified the changeover. That, that will be reflected in the 2018 budget. 18 budget, and we've already and worked out the details. And Okay. Right. And that's correct, and we put that in our subsequent <coughs> event, right. event about the change in the percentage. Perfect. Right. Okay. All right. And, and then we have... A brief synopsis of the 114 letter, which is our report to the board, that's and that's, that's the second that's document right here in this packet. Right, and the TDA did not adopt any new governmental account auditing accounting standards this year, and the only suggestion that we had was for um, for finance to recalculate to re recalculate when the um, when the occupancy tax in comes in. Right now, it's just being dropped into a spreadsheet, but it's a good idea to recalculate it also. What do you, what do you mean by that? Um, they're not checking to make sure it's accurate. And we've started doing that. So right, what we're doing that's correct. We're taking each um, 
remittance and recalculating the amount of tax that's being submitted to make sure that the calculation is done properly. Okay. It's based on the amount of revenue times the three percent. We're not auditing that revenue number because we don't. That's we, right. We're taking them at their word on that, right. but we are doing a mathematical calculation, and we started that in fiscal year eighteen, based on their recommendation. So, um, do do they send in a revenue report, or how are you validating that? We are not validating the revenue report. We're not going out and doing any audit of their books or anything. So basically they tell you their revenue is X amount of dollars and you just have to, is there a point at which that is audited? If you'll remember, that has been um, something that has been recommended right. in the past that every so often you hire a firm that would go out to the facilities, to the hotel facilities, and would audit their books. You have a right to do that or by using a third party. And so, consequently, that would be something that the authority can decide when it wish to do to do that. And um, well, we would like to do that. Okay. So I know we haven't done it yet. I didn't right. realize. Well, that we can we budget for that in the, in so the FY19. Um, in. Or would you like to try to find the funds out of this year to do it? Um, I would like to just to, my, my comment is I would like to try to get the funds out of this year. And the only reason is this is like what they call a reconciliation, basically what you're. One is matching something that they're providing. That's what that's what she's talking about right. here. Yes. Correct. Yes. So, yes. And we're not doing any auditing of their numbers. Right. But the sooner we get on board, the better. So. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, I agree. But do you have any that. idea of what the number is of what you're going to somebody's really going to charge? No, I'm saying what what is somebody going to charge, and what are you going to do? Are you going to just take a random sampling? Is what like NCDOT the sales tax? Mm -hmm. I think they just do it random. You're not saying you're going to go to every. No, you have no, to do no. a random. No, but It'd be like an audit. You know, right. You're picking you, random. How much you are we going to pay? You can just do so many a year. Well, that's well, what he's going to bring forward. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. They'll let us know. That's what we'll have to budget. Yeah. We, we, we've we been regularly approached by some firms that oh, have okay. done this for other other oh, jurisdictions. And so now would be, if, the, if it's the authorities wish, we will go back to let them start sending us some proposals as to how they would do this. <laughs> Also, this would be the appropriate time, particularly with my friend Lorette and others, that we would um, reach out to some of these other authorities and such there um, to find out what worked best for them. Um, obviously, because these hotels and management companies are our partners and such there. Um, and so we, we don't want to be intrusive to them. Um, so we would like to know what, how, how did we work with the industry in, in doing this. Okay. Yeah, that makes sense. And to be candid, it's been well, a long time that proposal we, back yes. to us with a scope of work and that for us to approve. Yes, sir. Now, when you say that, excuse me, John, when you say this year's budget, we're, we're talking about the one we're in now, 18. Yeah. yeah. Right. John? It might be good to also coordinate and with the county. Thank you. Yes. Yeah, and they, and they have they have used they, one. They're getting from the same folks we're getting from. Yes, and it could be a partnership opportunity. Mm -hmm. I don't know, yes. but uh, again, we need to be on the same page to some extent. We need right. to. That's excellent a great idea. suggestion. <clears throat> excellent idea. Right. And that's why we got the sudden. Uh, if you recall, we had a lot of people asking us if we wanted to do that. The county did do that um, in 2010. That was going to be my next question. Yes. So they've they've done it at least okay. one time. Yes. This is more information. But we God. have not in the seven years. Yeah, we, need, we so need to do it. I think we, we need, need to, to do that. And Lorette, my memory is they have not done it since then. Okay. Okay. And All you right. know, now thinking about it, I think they did it in 2000. It was fiscal year 2009. It was because it didn't ever coincide with us, our collections. But we used that, the numbers they got to kind of form where we were. And if you know, remember the budget that the legislature did for predicting what our sales, what the receipts would be, came from that document. Well, if you'll bring us... Uh, yes, sir. Yeah. Sure. I know that Carter County has well, done it say. once, I know, but they do it in conjunction with the tax department. Just, no, I think, we are. I think they use this... No, no, they use the same firm that audits for the personal property taxes, and oh, they do that quite regularly. I do think one of the firms that did contact us did something with property taxes. It probably was. But I've slept since then. Linda, I have a question. Since, since there has been the flip, will we be getting a different bill for your audit going forward? 
or is no. it going to stay the no. same? Okay. No, that won't. Okay. That won't. That wouldn't that make anything. any difference. No. Okay. Okay. We'll need a motion to adopt the audit as presented. So moved. Second. Any other discussion? Well, the only thing I want to say is I see in the packet here that the audit is provided online and on demand. Yes, for it's available for everyone just to for see. Just for the public to. Yes. Thank you for saying that. I was going to mention that, that anyone wanted to copy it. It's just that you can see already this packet was quite thick, and we didn't want to kill any more trees than what we needed to. But right. it is online. Those who are watching, you can simply go to the G10 tab, and all the documents that you have in front of you are available there. That's, that's my comment. Thank you. All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Thank you. Linda, thank you so much thank for being with us. Thank, thank you. Don't you wish all your customers were that easy? Sorry? Don't you wish all your customers were that easy? Thank you. Mm -hmm. Alan, anything else? Okay. All right, now we'll move uh, forward to item number six, which is page 15 of your packet, um, the strategic work of the authority. We're going to move into the art block. Go ahead. Absolutely. And if you'll recall, at the time that you appropriated funding for the events and festivals and activities, we had some that had not yet um, totally um, put in everything that was necessary because they were going through some reorganization. Well, we now have um, those, and it's getting close to time for us to react to them. And so one of them is Art Block. And basically, um, in summary of their application, and their full application is online, should you wish to see the 20-some pages of that. But it um, starts April 19th with a plein air competition. You'll recall that this competition of artists out in uh, the community really generates the overnight um, stays for this. And then I, on the Saturday, April the 20, 21st, they have a street festival, and um, the rooms are connected to the competition, as mentioned, with the attendance um, 2017 at about 2,500. They're targeting about um, 3,000 for 2018. Um, they have a new executive director. Um, there's been some remake of how they'll do this, but they still have a pretty significant number of the board members and the um, um, people who are involved in it are still there that um, have actually done the project as it was. The other one is uh, Mind, Body, and Soul, um, and this one is um, also went through some reorganization as it is there, and they um, are looking at April 26th to 27th. Um, they've had 350 um, in attendance with a target this year for 500, and of course they produced about 60 room nights, and the strategic initiative panel had suggested to them that they go after the female business traveler that this was the one that was the most significant in wanting motivational um, activities. Um, they wanted empowerment, um, women's empowerment, and that this should be the target they go after. And so this will involve some particular um, specialized marketing to, to find those people and to go with it. Um, and one of the things that's interesting is that they don't travel from a huge long distance. They'll travel from 200 miles and spend the night to do this because of attending the conference and the multi-day uh, facilities there. So um, what we're, um, what we're, both of them, um, a fifteen thousand dollar budget has been proposed for them. That money has been set aside in the in, from um, our when we did this back. I've forgotten when we did it, but it was I think April. But basically, that money's been sitting there, and with the authority uh, from you, uh, we will proceed. You can approve one or both, or tell us no. Fifteen thousand per event. Yes. For each event, 15 yes. for each event. Yes. Any questions? Which, and these were funded last year? Yes. Both. Um, just as a, Glenn, on, on the art block, uh, rooms connected to competition, do we, did we get a figure from last year and do they have a projection for this year? Yes, I, I don't want to speak um, without... <laughs> The, um, I have to look on the full application there, but it was it was a number that was less than twenty. Uh, but they now what it is with giving cash awards, they think they'll draw more artists to participate, and that they can bring that number up to around forty. Okay. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, if there's no other discussion, I make a motion to approve $15,000 that's already been uh, earmarked for both of these marketing, uh, both of these 
events for the marketing fund subject to the standard terms and conditions the authority previously approved for other similarly funded okay. activities. I have a motion. Second. I have a second. Any discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All right. Motion carries. And we do see both these events as incubator type events with some, you know, um, potential for the future um, that are out there. Now, in things that have happened since the last meeting, um, one of them obviously was the remembrance run, and uh, the full report of that is provided in the digital online version um, for anyone to see there. Um, we're simply going to give you a summary that um, basically the registration was up uh, significantly by 44%. And they got about 500 estimated out-of-county um, visitors. And, of course, the Heroes Mile, which we previously have talked to you folks about, was the most mentioned. Um, toward the end of that, 61% um, of the two races thus far um, live outside Onslow, and 56% traveled more than 200 miles, with 804 room nights thus confirmed um, for the two races that are here now. And 87% of those surveyed indicated they wanted to return. And, of course, um, to your credit, the Heroes Mile was the most mentioned item of why they wanted to return and what impact that the race had had upon them as it was. So now we're going to ask Latoya Scott to come forward, and um, we're going to present um, um, a little video and um, let her talk to you about um, some things that happened with um, Final Touch um, models and what things there and such to go from that deal. That's just a little short video that um, they produced and um, we cut down and Toy, if you want to mention anything, we'll also show a little, some of the pictures that we took from the event. Yeah, um, this year's event was definitely very successful. I was totally pleased with everything this year. Uh, we definitely did grow in numbers when it comes to uh, social media and um, Ticket, ticket wise, uh, not not so much because of the uh, the venue. However, we love the venue very much. Love the venue very much, um, and we just plan to eventually just bust out the seams on that particular venue until we find something big enough to hold everyone. Um, uh, by doing polls and stuff, majority of their, our guests definitely are coming back. We actually already started um, some of our, our, our social media market, uh, marketing campaign with creating our uh, event page and uh, a few other things, updating what's happening for next year. And we already have people uh, pre-registering for that as well. And since our tickets did not go on sale yet, we actually have people emailing us wanting tickets for next year already. So we are definitely pleased with that aspect of things. Um, it's, and then um, as far as our guests, um, our guests definitely, are, a lot of our out-of-town guests, they definitely uh, went outside of uh, the hotel to uh, eat, dine. Um, we've even had uh, a, a lot of our guests use a lot of our salons and, uh, and even the school who we partnered with to get hair and makeup and things like that done for that weekend. So that definitely was a plus for uh, the city. So that was great. Um, but we will work on making sure we get those exact numbers because uh, that was, yeah. So any questions, I guess? Thank you, Latoya. Any questions? Where was the venue? The Hilton Garden. Little plug. 
<laughs> and her report, I mentioned, I should have said, is on page 17 and is online too. And um, she reported more than 55 room nights um, from this um, exercise. And so, Glenn, as part of this, we'll get a the full report with numbers in the back, and that's something that we're going to work on well, to get that's more That's what, um, yeah, you've, okay. you've got, yeah. I can, I'd like to comment on it. I was at the sure. event, and um, it was a, a well, well put together, well run event. And um, kudos to the girls that did a fine job. Um, everybody seemed to have a great time. It was, if there were any little snafus, no one knew because it was smooth as silk. And the, the girls on stage were great. Her MC was great. Um, they, it was a wonderful event. So, Teresa, for the purpose of the authority, um, <coughs> you're talking about data gathering is that something that needs to enhance or are we, what I didn't understand what you were saying well, I, I'm I sorry. guess um, just being here I was looking looking through some of the paperwork um, one of the things I definitely want to have uh, next year pending you know if we right. come back next year um, that uh, just the actual numbers of okay. the economic impact that type of number I thought okay. that was real Got smart it. to have so use the formula something yeah this. just something okay. I yeah, mm -hmm. work on for, for next time and then also another thing that we changed uh, since the year one was I actually partnered up not just with the Hilton Garden but we also I also partnered up with a and B creative events mm -hmm. who was absolutely phenomenal as this is who's sitting here <laughs> next to me um, so it helped um, instead of me trying to event, plan my own event so it definitely helped. I actually was able to walk around and uh, entertain guests because everyone definitely wanted to check out the newspaper dress. So it was definitely <laughs> <laughs> it was def definitely awesome. I had a few moms trying to steal coupons off my. <laughs> <laughs> it was definitely great um, that I was able to actually walk around and uh, talk to guests this year instead of running around trying to make sure everything was in order and B definitely took care of that so that was definitely a definitely a huge plus um, they, they took care of everything including our photo booth so that was great because that came with them and that was awesome and um, and our guests was able to enjoy that as well and then um, another partnership we did was with the Hilton Garden um, and we did have a we did have some concerns about that because they were small and we already knew just from the first year that we can pack 500 plus um, but we just, we wanted to make sure that because of new changes and things like that, we just want to grow, just, just, just take our time just growing. And they did, a, they did a phenomenal job with us and it was just great. And we look forward to that partnership and we already met with them again, just to talk about what to do for next year, because we definitely put them out the water with their restaurant and great. just being the, uh, the first year they, it was, it was crazy. They did, they did over a thousand plus at the the restaurant just on the first night so and it was it wasn't something that they were expecting the first night because we just we weren't sure what our guests was going to do or not do since we never really had a food option for the event but it did very very well so we already met with them to talk about how we can do better for the next year maybe even have some meals already pre-prepped for the, our guests and then they can just pick from a, a special menu just to make things run a little faster and smoother. So that was that was definitely a, um, a plus for the, the hotel. They just they want to make sure everything runs smoother for next year. Latoya, then, thank you. One of yes. the things about her hiring um, A and B to come in, we specialize in data and numbers and targets and goals and our why for everything that we do. So coming into an organization that was already established but not established um, the correct business way, we are revamping from year one of collecting all data, <laughs> all <laughs> contact, all why. We, I go in and I, wipe, just like the military, wipe it down and build it back up. Wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Latoya, well, we appreciate quick, you being here. Was this here. not rescheduled? Yes, yes, it was. Yes. Oh my goodness, thank you. So yes, we even rescheduled it because of the, the hurricanes. The hurricanes. Um, we had a few out out of town guests who were in the areas affected and then we weren't sure what our area was doing because they did the whole North Carolina on high alert and we definitely did change the date last minute we I know Teresa was like oh my god so we were just, <laughs> so we we did not know what to expect and we definitely was blown away by the love that we were shown and um, all of our guests were still able to out of all of our out of town guests were still able to attend and we do have 
a few of those numbers we're missing some of the the numbers for the out of town guests that we have these are just one of the, the some that actually filled out our survey that we had at our our front desk uh, check-in desk so um, our numbers for out of town definitely has grown um, just based on since first year we only counted the numbers that we personally brought in this year we were able to count the numbers we brought in plus guests that actually just came to enjoy the show so we do have some of those numbers from some of those guests and we just got some new numbers from people that we didn't know but they just messaged us so that's why i'm saying we're missing a few so we do have some of our numbers for our out of town guests so those numbers are definitely grown as well so i'm just excited about the whole project well thank you again and thank you for your efforts thank you we look forward to next year um, any other questions? Thank you. Yeah, Mr. Chairman, I think one of the things that I picked up on her presentation was that they actually had folks that used some of our other businesses. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yeah. definitely. So that's a spinoff, I think, that we don't push or talk about enough is that when we have these events and, and we fund these events, they actually go out into our community and spend more dollars which is tax revenue that comes back in the form of sales tax. So in that's airport. interesting to hear that they uh, they do that. So. Oh, yes. And Victoria partners with a lot of the local mm -hmm. businesses to help yeah. put the show yeah. on. Mm -hmm. So she's absolutely in the community first and, and helping those businesses. And I think that's one of the things that kind of gets Definitely. lost sometimes. Um, and yeah, and then not not counting what the hotel made because they told us it was 1000 plus just on Friday night alone. But we also have a boutique that did over $900 on um, just on Saturday night alone so there's a few other boutiques that also did some of those numbers as well so that's why I said I'm gonna make sure I plug those numbers in for next time oh, thank you I can give you mine <laughs> did you bring any coupons <laughs> I couldn't grab unfortunately, I, unfortunately I definitely recycled the dress after the end of the day. <laughs> it was a little too heavy to keep walking around well, thank you very much we thank appreciate you, you. Uh, Theo, and now we're going to join us. Bring Theo. We're going to show a little video, and then he has some few things that he wants to show to you. Chairman and members of the authority, thank you for inviting us to be with you. Uh, joining me is Paige Cuffle, our event organizer. Paige and I come representing Oslo Community Outreach and the many people who help us to make Oktoberfest a success. First, let me say on behalf of the outreach, we certainly value the partnership that we have with the Tourism Authority. We see it as a partnership because you, you're work, working very diligently to enhance our community, bringing guests to our community. Um, and we want to assure you that we are with you um, in that mission. Also, I want to thank your staff and your uh, um, biomark advertising. Throughout the process of organizing Oktoberfest, your staff was accessible, uh, provided us very effective and frank uh, feedback, and the quality of the marketing products. Uh, many of our guests and vendors who were local and from far away commented on the, the quality of our marketing products. So I certainly thank them for, for those efforts. I just want to spend a few moments with you and then I'll be available for your questions. Oktoberfest had uh, our major activities or um, uh, in working with the lodging industry and restaurant industry. We started with a Thursday night reception at the Carolina Ale House. 
And by the way, uh, that partnership and relationship is growing. Based on our being, uh, uh, being with them on Thursday night, they made a contribution on the number of guests and uh, ticket sales and revenue to our Onslow uh, Soup Kitchen. So we certainly appreciate that partnership with the, uh, with the local restaurant. On Friday, we had a wonderful activity. Uh, we had the soup, soup kitchen, super run uh, downtown, uh, starting uh, in Riverwalk Park. And uh, that thing is right in line with the Oslo Community Outreach Mission. So we feel that we've got that part right in terms of the run, connecting it to what we do, the purpose of Oslo Community Outreach. On Saturday, we had an all-day festival, and uh, <clears throat> our we had a uh, we used Survey Monkey for uh, our um, uh, survey of 185 uh, potential respondents, and 49% of them rated Oktoberfest as excellent to very good, excellent to very good compared to uh, similar festivals in Eastern North Carolina. Our attendance this year was approximately 9,500. We had about 300, 200, 300 people at the Ale House, 300 participants on Friday night, and over 9,000 on Saturday. Uh, some of us uh, mentioned in terms of our observations of the festival and attendance this year, in past years from 10 o'clock to 12 noon on Saturday, we've had a whoosh uh, of people who were attended. This year, it was like all day, 55, 60 miles per hour all day. So a very steady attendance throughout the day. With respect to connecting to uh, tourism, uh, we had 15 identified hotel rooms. We also, for the first time, worked with Meeting Max. Uh, we had 8% of our survey respondents <coughs> reported staying at a local lodging facility, 8%. 83% of our survey respondents purchase fuel, food, or supplies, and that is in line with the comments I heard earlier. 15% of our vendors were, was, vendors were from outside Oslo County, and 4% of our vendors, vendors were from outside North Carolina. <clears throat> we use an economic impact formula provided to us a couple of years ago by Oslo County. That formula indicates that we had, that Oktoberfest had an impact of $220,000 in our community. I do want to shift as we go to the last slide uh, and just to indicate to you in terms of Oktoberfest, a couple of things that we know that we do well in our areas for growth. Uh, Oktoberfest provides and raises income for our local charitable programs the soup kitchen, homeless shelter, and our clinic programs. Those programs will help 9,000 of our neighbors this year when you add Christmas cheer to that. So raising money for those programs is essential. Oktoberfest has become key to sustaining those programs, our local charitable programs, in a quality manner. We also present to our community, we believe, a quality three-day event that is adding to the cultural offerings of our community. We also, because we receive marketing dollars for, uh, from this group for Oktoberfest, one of the things that we know that we need to grow and shall do a better job of is the tourism impact. Um, and today there are some um, uh, recommendations and some changes that we will be making in that regard. First, um, we uh, are going to, um, and we're asking uh, your, your new, one of your new staff persons who at Sports Commission to collaborate with us to establish a partnership where we would have an athletic uh, tournament that would be on the same weekend as Oktoberfest. We would hope that through that partnership and uh, working with the Sports Commission, we would have something similar to a softball tournament where guests would come on Friday night and stay on Saturday through Sunday. That's important to us because I mentioned to you there are two things that we know that we do well. We raise the money for charitable programs. We present a high quality community event. One of the things that we know that we need help with is that athletic event that's bringing people to our community that will stay Friday and Saturday night. We need to collaborate with groups that do that on a regular basis 
I think if we stay in our path and have a partnership with someone else, another organization and sponsors that, that, that will help us to achieve more heads on beds in our community. Uh, so that is a significant change, a significant growth that will help us, we believe, um, achieve greater impact with, with respect to tourism. Also, we want to expand our Friday night activities. Uh, you saw some of the slides and the vibrancy of activities that are going on in the park on Friday and Saturday night. If we have a tournament, groups coming on Friday night, we want to offer to them a high quality Friday evening activity. So that if they have games on Friday or they, if they come in early on Friday and will play in a tournament on Saturday and Sunday, when they arrive on Friday, we will have a wonderful quality event downtown under the big tent, uh, music uh, and urban uh, atmosphere. We also are looking forward to model what's working well in our community. Our good uh, friend, Lorette Ligon, is here today and she's with the Chamber of Commerce and they offer business after hours, a very quality activity. We want to model what they do and perhaps work with a group to have a business type, business after hours type activity downtown under the big tent on that Friday night. Uh, we are also looking to collaborate with our uh, the, uh, sponsor of our beer product, Coastal Beverage, has already indicated they are willing and hoping to increase their support of Oktoberfest, and they have indicated they have the resources and the contacts to bring craft beer companies into the activity on Friday night. So with these changes, we know there will be a quality activity for those guests, those tournament participants who would come on Friday. These are two significant changes that will help us, um, let us keep doing what we do well, but also have a greater impact on tourism. We thank you for the, for the investments that you have made in Oslo Oktoberfest, and we assure you that we are pushing forward to, a, uh, to have a greater tourism impact. Any questions that you may have? Thank you, Theo. Great report. Any questions? Scott? Yes, sir. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, so we met earlier this week to start the initial discussions about doing a, a sporting event in conjunction with Oktoberfest, so we're in the very early stages of that, uh, but, but definitely something we can help with. Good, good. Now, have you thought beyond softball? Have you looked at other activities uh, sports-wise that might... Uh, yeah, we, we, we discussed several different things. We're going to start with softball because we think that, that we can do something neat there with some slow-pitch adult softball right. uh, to bring in with, in conjunction with this event. Mm -hmm. Okay, sounds great. And we're looking I'd to also like the idea of the craft beers, which right. is a... I know looking, Wilmington does a really good job yeah, with that. And, of course, they've got cool. some craft breweries there, but right. if we can draw some area, of that. People travel for that. Yeah, they oh, travel yeah. For some, some good craft brews. Absolutely. So so you're in the right direction, for sure. And we're looking to leverage our great location here and our connections, our community connection with the military community. And Scott and I, and I brainstorming, just initial brainstorming, uh, there are some friends to the west of us, Fayetteville and Cumberland, Cumberland County, they have Fort Bragg. Even reaching out and having some friendly competition, you know, Jacksonville, Oslo versus softball teams from Fayetteville, Cumberland County. So that will, adding some, uh, you know, building on the strengths of our community uh, will help us, I think, grow the impact of tourism. And we really appreciate Scott's willingness to, uh, to meet with us and to uh, engage in a way forward. Well, he needs to produce, so you need to help him out. <laughs> I'm not sure if anybody told him yet. But, you know, he does I'm Vanna to White today, putting out all these names. <laughs> Be careful, Scott. <laughs> Any other questions? Theo, thank you very much for a great report. Thank you all. Good report to next year. And now we're going to ask okay. Jeff Barrett and his team Jeff? to come up, yep. and we've got a little video to show for you there Wonderful. also, thank sir. You.
Well, I want to introduce to you Stacy Ross and Omar here with um, with uh, with uh, Jeff. Jeff. Excuse me. Ah. <laughs> I was wondering. I Move the name right. tag. Right. Scott got them wrong. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Forgive me there. <laughs> Jeff Barrett <laughs> and his team there, and Good. he was the ball chairman, and um, he can chair, um, talk to us a little bit about what happened and how things went. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Um, once again, I want to thank the uh, the authority for uh, the support and um, um, the help with the marketing for our Cherry Ball weekend. Uh, I feel like it was a huge success. Um, we um, we started off on October the 26th and it carried out through the 28th. That would be a Thursday through all the way through Sunday morning. Uh, we started off on that Thursday with a, um, with a meet and greet for our out of town guests who would like to show up early on the Thursday. Um, the Thursday night is growing. Um, I think the hotel said that on Thursday, uh, all but 19 rooms were sold on that Thursday night. And normally, it's uh, just a small crowd on Thursday. So we had about two, over 200 people come out to the meet and greet on Thursday evening. And it went from 8 p.m. to midnight. <clears throat> and then also on Friday, uh, those people who came on Thursday, we wanted to give them a little something to do um, on that little downtime between Friday uh, until it was time for the, uh, the fish fry on Friday evening. So we, uh, we started a boat ride, a boat cruise uh, along the New River. Uh, we uh, partnered with the uh, Marina Cafe. Uh, we served wine and cheese, and we had some live entertainment on the boat. And it uh, turns out that was uh, the biggest hit of the ball weekend. <laughs> 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 so we, uh, we had a lot of praise uh, for that boat ride, and we were just experimenting with something, um, giving the people something to do. Uh, the only drawback is that you could only fit 60 people right. on the boat. Uh, that's including the staff. So uh, we got to put our heads together to see what we can come up with to get more people out there on the New River. <laughs> more uh, boat. More <laughs> boats. <laughs> more boats. <laughs> yeah. And then um, on that um, Friday evening, we had a, a nice fish fry. And all of this is all inclusive. It's on a $60 ticket for the entire weekend. Um, and a lot of our guests, they still ask, <laughs> ask the question, how in the world can y'all make a profit? <laughs> so on a $60 ticket for an entire weekend. But we make it happen. Uh, this year was our um, biggest profit in the last 20 years of Arabian Temple. And I feel like it had a lot to do with the uh, marketing. We were able to reach the people that we don't normally reach uh, with our regular letters that we would send out. So uh, I think it was a huge help. <clears throat> also, um, Saturday, we had a scholarship presentation at the hotel at the Hampton Inn, which is our, was our host hotel. Uh, we gave away three $1,000 scholarships uh, to uh, high school graduates out of the Kinston, Jacksonville, and New Bern area. <clears throat> um, I think we didn't really get a lot of pictures of the scholarship presentation, um, but we'll do better on that next year, trust me. Uh, Saturday evening. Saturday evening was the actual ball itself, where everybody was either dressed formal or semi-formal. Um, that's kind of like the um, the climax of the whole the whole weekend for us. That's when everybody gets a chance to come out and showcase their uh, latest outfits. Um, it was well received. Also, <laughs> it's, it's hosted at, it's at the American Legion uh, out in Broadhurst. And with this year, we had 660 tickets uh, sold. Uh, I think last year we were um, somewhere in the little 500 range. So we did uh, have a huge increase this year. We know we had an increase because we ran out of food. <laughs> <laughs> First time ever. <laughs> at the fish fry, we ran out of fish, but we wanted to make sure we didn't run out of food at the actual ball. Uh, so we had leftovers at the ball. Um, I think next year we'll switch up our host hotel uh, the Hilton Garden uh, will probably be our host hotel on next year. They have a few more rooms, uh, and they also have a, a banquet area that could suit our Friday night masquerade party, rather than having our guests drive to the American Legion 
um, and possibly some of them drinking and driving back to the hotel. Uh, so to um, limit that this year, we did provide a, a shuttle, a shuttle van uh, and a driver for all those who did have uh, too much to drink or who were drinking at all and didn't want to drive. Uh, and that turned out to be a huge success. Uh, we needed about four more vans. <laughs> <laughs> Once they got wind that there was a shuttle, everybody just started falling in line, uh, which it, it was expected. Uh, so we learn as we go. Uh, we uh, write down what we feel short at at different times. So uh, in next year's planning, uh, we can go a little smoother. <clears throat> and um, as far as uh, the room sold, um, uh, we, we, we generated uh, 256 room nights, uh, which um, the Hampton Inn told us that it brought in about $31,000 to the hotel within those three days. Um, the State Bridge Suites was one of our overflow, overflow hotels, and also the Hilton Garden was an overflow hotel. Uh, although the uh, State Bridge, they didn't have solid numbers to give us as far as booking under the Arabian Temple block, um, but the Hilton Garden, they had um, solid numbers for us, which I think like 12 room nights were sold there. <clears throat> um, other than that, I think that um, um, with working with Teresa was awesome. She's always easy to get along with. Uh, her and her staff, uh, no matter what I send them, uh, she, she make it work. <laughs> and it's not always the, the best thing that I send her as far as trying to get stuff out, but she'll make a way to uh, get it out on Facebook, she'll make a way to get it out on the billboards. Uh, the billboards there, a huge uh, hit. Uh, we get people uh, commenting all the time about how they seen the billboards along um, the highways in Kinston, New Bern, um, along Highway 70 or wherever. Rebuild. So uh, we, we think that brought some people in also. And we have people traveling from up and down the East Coast um, as far also from uh, Tennessee. Uh, we even had uh, folks come in from Hawaii we had uh, folks come in from uh, the Far East, so folks coming in from all over to attend our ball weekend, and it's growing. Uh, and before I close out, I do want to let the committee know, uh, know, the authority know rather, that Arabian Temple is based in Craven County. It's based in New Bern. Um, but what we've done, we've put our resources together, all, all of our members from Jacksonville, and we've brought the temple here to Jacksonville now. It's in our little county now. Um, we operate. We'll, we will be commissioned to operate um, January 13th at a brand new temple here in Jacksonville. So now we're able to put all our all of our resources, all of our um, monies back into the community here in Jacksonville, Onslow County, uh, versus um, spending it in Craven County and Illinois County and Onslow County. We don't have to do a three-way split anymore. <laughs> we bring it all here. <laughs> um, but I, I'm uh, open for questions unless you got something. Um, with that also comes a name change. Uh, I know that would probably be an impact for you, uh, <laughs> but that would come with a name uh, change. Um, we were very excited, um, especially when we talked about the boat trip. Uh, the boat trip was really exciting. We went out on the boat trip. They took us out 30 minutes out, 30 minutes back. And by the time we got back to shore with the entertainment and everything, of course, with the moccasins going across the water was a good touch. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone realized they should stay on the boat, <laughs> whether the wine was good or not. <laughs> um, but by the time we got back to the marina, before we left the marina, let me say, um, everyone made sure they got their stomachs full first before they left out. So the marina was very happy. By the time we got back to the marina, we had a whole bunch of people talking about when can they sign up for the boat for next year. So we didn't have enough space for them this year, but uh, hopefully we can work out something for us. That is concerned. They really enjoyed that. Uh, the other thing we did in coordination with that was just prior to the boat ride, uh, we gave them a tour of the uh, Memorial Gardens. The Memorial Gardens, and that was very exciting for them uh, as a former marine. And uh, a couple of those walls that are very important to me, um, they really enjoyed the information that they received. Uh, a lot of times we take for granted that everyone knows about uh, what we do as the military. But when you got people coming from all around and you stand there in front of the Beirut Memorial and say, I actually have members there that were part of my unit and talk to them about it and make it more personal, it becomes a powerful statement and a powerful thing. And they're looking forward to that next year as well. So those were a couple of things that we added, and it uh, went over real well. Thank you.
And once again, we thank all that y'all for all that y'all do. Um, our advertisement is great. Everyone talks about it, and uh, it's just an outstanding. Uh, thank you. Most thank comments I got was on the excellent fish. Really? Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Jeff, thank you for a great report. Any questions or comments? Yeah. Since you're bringing it to Onslow County in Jacksonville, uh, a couple of things. What is the reaction from Newbern and Kinston on that? And how does that affect the size of your event going forward? Well, that's a good question. Thank you. Uh, during the course of our um, uh, ball weekend preparation, um, the pictures that you saw up there with the huge amount of people in the American Legion, uh, really there's 33 tables. Um, and they contain 24 people each at each table. The Jacksonville area Shriners here, we're responsible for 30, uh, 23 of those 33 tables that are sold. So you got two thirds of the business. Yes, sir. So I feel like that um, we have a few members who don't even contribute at all because they don't like riding down to Newburn. They don't like going down in the middle of the week. So they're not active. But now that we're bringing uh, the temple here in Jacksonville, all of those who were who had fell to the wayside, now they're getting back active, and now they want to contribute to try to make the ball weekend a, a success on the same level as it was with Arabian, because you figure there's only 10 tables that were left out there in limbo, and we know that we had the personnel to sell those 10 tables also since we come to Jacksonville now. So, like this year, you had approximately 250 rooms. You see next year is it at least equaling or surpassing that. Yes, sir. Okay. I feel like we'll be equal to passing. Yeah. Well, Mr. Chairman, that's that's impressive. That's very impressive. Very impressive for one week. Great job. One yeah. week. Great job by by you folks. Outstanding. You know, one thing I want to say is I've you know I've I've attended these things uh, over I think twenty years at least, uh, <laughs> and uh, it's get it gets better and better every year, and I think this is the first year that the tourism board pay is its first one second, second year. Second I'm sorry. Third year. Third, third. Is it third year that we've contributed to the uh, marketing, but it is working and everything. Uh, the only question I have is, is the Arabian Temple 42 name going to remain with the New Bern chapter? Are we going to be a new Arabian Temple number? No, actually, Arabian Temple stays in New Bern. Uh, we, tried, we tried that route to, mm -hmm. uh, to make the move, but that, that motion was denied because simply because Arabian Temple has 165 people on the rolls. Uh, Jacksonville area uh, will probably make up about 50 to 60 of that. Okay. But don't let the numbers fool you because out of the 160 that's on the rolls, um, the strong 75 or 80 that's working. They're active. 50 of them are from Jacksonville. <laughs> they want to work. Okay. I say that to say, uh, you know, we pulled the load in most of all the committees that are formed. All of the uh, line officers uh, who pull the weight, who actually make the temple operate properly, we, we hold all the key positions uh, during election time. Uh, the other two uh, areas, Kinston and New Bern, they rarely ever take positions or seats uh, on committees or right. position of uh, leadership. So we figure, you know, why keep driving an hour down the road to do all that work when we can have our own here and do the work, you know. So we know we can make it happen because we simply we're pulling the load now already. Okay. All right. Uh, addition to that is um, understanding temples. Um, we do have uh, a temple that comes from overseas. It's called the Far East, and that they're actually called Oblis. Uh Once they leave Okinawa, Japan, or overseas, once they come here, uh, they have no opportunity to really grow or move up in a temple. They pretty much just have a little group meeting. And that's quite a few people. Now with uh, this temple coming to Jacksonville, and I'll speak on it, uh, um, when they come into Jacksonville, they have found an avenue where as they could switch over as well. So we have a whole group of people. We don't know exactly how many numbers as of yet, but we know we have a whole bunch of them that are saying, okay, now we can actually go into a temple and go to work. And these are people that are actually like associates with us that have been doing the work with us already, but now they see an opportunity where they can change the name on their fez and actually become an active part of a temple because it'll be one here in Jacksonville. Great. Thank you very much. We appreciate you.
and answer his last question. Uh, Newburn and Kenston, they're not happy. <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of figured that. <laughs> well, thank you very much again for joining us, and thank you for a very valuable report. We appreciate you. Thank you. Good job. All right, we're going to move into um, uh, some reports, right. uh, status reports since the last meetings. We got quite a few initiatives to go through. Glenn, Don't you want to run this through them for you, please? sir? The um, jazz in the city on um, that report um, um, is basically that they are proceeding along, as you will see on um, um, your page 43. Um, they've got it set now for um, February 2nd and February 3rd. Um, the, you also will notice that there's a new committee chairman for jazz in the city, and that's Grover Lewis. Many of you know him. Yes. And um, we... Um, those of us who have met with him, we feel very confident about um, how this event will continue on, and um, um, I think you're going to see some really positive developments out of this. Okay. Sturgeon City Earth Day, um, there's been some combination of staffing issues and the constrained space due to the um, construction there. Um, they're politely declining to proceed with this year, and, um, but they would like to be considered for FY19 right. uh, for the Earth Day. And then the final report received since the last meeting is the Marine Corps Half Marathon, and that is available to you in your digital version um, that's out there as it is. I'll just mention on upcoming events is obviously um, we're just um, hours away from um, the um, start of Jacksonville Winterfest, um, and there will be significant events that will happen um, on Saturday, I mean, um, December 1st. Um, at, at the Jacksonville Commons, and of course um, that will go through the weekend. And then on Saturday, the big event that will be downtown at Riverwalk Crossing Park starting at 1 o'clock and going into the evening with the flotilla and the, the um, tree lighting and all sorts of wonderful things uh, will be there, and that's, that's 1 to 6 on that day. Um, toward the end of the downtown, there'll be just lots of um, um, Susan Baptist is here, by the way, and her team has put together a fantastic um, series of events. And you'll notice that you'll see sledding and ice skating and all sorts of wonderful things that'll be happening down there during that time. Snowmobiling. Um, didn't Next see year, oh, we're talking yes. about it. Thanks for the idea. <laughs> <laughs> Find some dog sleds. We're going to have some. But I want you to note that they are very encouraged by the, uh, you know, the flotilla is going to be bigger than it has been in the past. And um, I in think years. that um, well, this is this is like very that. positive. So we give that um, lots of credit there. We did mention already Jazz in the City for February um, 2nd and 3rd. And, of course, Extreme Endurance Challenge. You'll recall last year we had some jur journal um, journalists and bloggers with us, and we brought them in for that. And, of course, um, um, uh, Laurette's favorite time of the year is Engaged Onslow Bridal Expo when she gets to see a lot of exchange go out there as it was. So if you'd like me to continue, I can just go with the strategic initiative, Please. sir. Unless you any, have any questions, questions on any of these events? What was Friday again? When? Friday. Friday was... Oh, I mean, what was the time? I mean, Fr uh, you said... Friday, the... You, first. What time did you actually start? Started at five. Yeah. Okay. But that's not downtown, though. Right. No, that's oh, okay. that's okay. the commons, okay. right. Uh -huh. But that's just that's just a little bit away. <laughs> okay. Glenn, if I may, just jazz in the city, just to if people are listening. Uh, we've got a website that's up that uh, advertises it. It's jjcoalition1.com. That's jjcoalition1.com, and what it basically does, it tells you the performers, what time uh, they're coming on, who they are, like Stanley Bear, George Freeman. These folks play for Otis Redding and. Gladys Knight and everything, and uh, with JJCoalition1.com, you'll also be able to punch in for tickets, to buy tickets on the website. So Wonderful. people apparently, and I, my wife educated me last night, I said, well, give me 50 <laughs> tickets. As she often does. As she does. <laughs> I said, give me 50 tickets so I can go ahead and uh, sell them to people. She said, people don't give tickets out anymore. They buy them online. And... You know, that was just news to me. Yeah. <laughs> Where have you been? I'm used we to should slipping. see me in the room with these guys. Yeah. I'm, I'm used to slipping two tickets in somebody's hand. You yeah. haven't heard of Lawyer.com? Yeah. <laughs> I don't need you guys. Ever. Me and Ernie are old school, right? We're old school. <laughs> Slip me two tickets, you know, in my hand. You know, let's go with it. Now, but, all of these things are happening in Jacksonville, the city that has nothing to do. Is that correct? Oh, yes. Yeah. That's what I thought. Well, that's all I have to say thank about you. that. But it, it's wonderful. We're, we're well on our way. And thank you, Teresa. Uh, we, we met 
late last night, but thank you. Appreciate Go ahead. It. Okay, so on the strategic initiative, the reunion work, and I'm going to let Laura talk about that in the interest of time when she comes to her point here. She's going to substitute for Kristen today. Uh, um, I'm going to change that up on you because you got Lisa here. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Lisa, Lisa is Scott running. Scott put out a name tag. Yeah, Lisa is, <laughs> she is the staff person with the All chamber right. that is leading the military reunion recruitment. So she has joined us today to talk about some of the advancements that's been made to date. Okay, great. Thank you. Excellent. Lisa? Okay. Um, we started with an e-blast and we delivered it to 50,000 people that are interested in military reunions. Um, eight, over 8,600 openings and we immediately saw clicks on our website of a spike of 1,900 go to that web page. So that was just our first e-blast that we took care of. And then since then, we've con continued to see, in the last 90 days, over 4,000 clicks to that web page. So it, it's continuing on as they keep in contact with us. So, and then our next thing that me and Kristen did is we signed up for YMRC, which is a military planners kind of conference. And um, we signed up for the Platinum membership, which allows us to get out, go meet with military planners, kind of like a speed dating kind of thing where me and Kristen are going to sit there and sell them on Jacksonville to attend, have their meetings here. Um, we have our first conference that we are going to February 18th. So um, it's a four-day conference, and um, it's from what we've heard, it's the biggest of all the conferences of the year. So it's in Myrtle Beach this year for that one. And then um, we do have four organic kind of reunions that are already coming that we're helping facilitate and kind of grow as they come here. So the first one's at the end of March. Our second one's all April. Third one is July, August. And then final one is October. All of these military? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Wonderful. Great. When you say organic, meaning that they've they already, already been, coming they're naturally, already coming and we're just trying just to develop help. and grow. Okay. Good. Wonderful. Well, this right. is good. We'll Dose say on the docent, we're still we're advertising for volunteers um, for that. You can call nine three eight help, or you can um, also go online to to sign up for that. And we're we've had to move our launch time in that into January for that point at this time. We'll mention about the awareness efforts there and the media campaign that's available, particularly our update from Susan Dozer on DK Communication. Many of you might have seen this. Um, um, Ron Massey was a great um, facilitator in this. We got General Dickerson um, to write a little piece about um, 10 great places to visit to honor the military. And this was um, part of a series that USA Today does about um, with um, retired military and some other people to do. Um, this has been very positive and um, has really put it out. 138 million visitors to the site. I mean, this is unbelievable. And um, obviously, um, Lejeune Memorial Gardens was the first thing on the list. And so that pushes that back up. And you see the number of Facebook shares there. And we've also had some um, TV sites that pick it up and put it on their, their web pro program also. Um, we loved how the tweet of the USA Today also advanced this uh, in very much ways there. And at the time this was taken um, on November the 10th, uh, there was about 21 already retweets and 40 likes as it is. Wow. But the pictures, the pat there, we supplied all these to make it work easy for USA Today and for General Dickerson. And um, he did a great job with his list of um, 10 great places to honor military. Again, kudos to Susan Dozer. This was a connection she made for us and got this put together, and it's been out there. Um, new things that will happen um, connected to the website is um, a weekend itinerary, um, thing, seven reasons to go cycling here, and six things you didn't know about Jacksonville and what you can do for pet-friendly places and family fun events. So these are the enhancements that are being made to the website and to present from that as it is there. So, um, sir, that's all that we have, and you can call on Scott. And Thank you very much, Glenn. Ms. Any Lord. questions on any of that? Good work. Scott? Yes, sir. So this, this ended up being a uh, very fitting day to update uh, the authority on Meeting Max. So as you know, you guys invested in that, I guess it was a couple of years ago, 
with the sports commission to facilitate. Um, you know, being honest, it's not lived up to its full potential. Some of that was with staff turnover. Some of that was just communication and being consistent. So we uh, offered two different meeting dates. We provided breakfast one morning, lunch another day, and asked all the hoteliers to come. Uh, had a decent turnout. Not every hotel came, but we uh, educated them on Media Max. We updated them on how we're going to proceed going forward and be more consistent. So being completely honest with you, it's a little bit of a challenge these days. Everyone is just used to hopping online and booking a hotel room. And they're still doing that with Meeting Max, but they have to get the link. And the challenge sometimes is, um, you know, let's, let's, let's use your fashion show. We give you the link. Now we're relying on you to get that link out, and then you're relying on them to actually use the link. So there, there's just a lot of steps that can break down there. So what we've committed to do is... Before you uh, go on, can I have yes, sir. interject? Is that not something that you can tie in since you're doing the marketing? Yeah, we can, and we we put it like LaToya runs her website, and we help with that, and, and you put it in. Some of the events weren't really, we weren't really ready with meeting okay. back, so I don't think yeah. everybody and understood That's in it. the past. But moving yeah. forward, moving it's forward, something that you can sort of have as a checkbox and yes. say, where is this, and what media do you have it in, and yep. do we need to get it? And it's it? even more of a challenge with sporting events, to be honest with you. if we Let's say we're sending it out to an event organizer, now we're relying on that organizer to get it out to all the teams, and then you're relying on the coach to get it to the parents. So one of the things we're doing in-house is we're trying to, to get a hold of every email list we can in conjunction with that. We're also tagging them on their social media. So if we have a list of these 16 teams are coming, we're taking the time to go find them on social media and tag them with that link. So what the plan is we're going we're gonna to do this properly for the next year and a half and then reevaluate. And if it's just not working, it's not working. If it's working, fantastic. So the one thing that we would ask you guys to do, if you're truly wanting these meeting max numbers at the conclusion of an event, uh, we would ask that you require them or ask them to sit down with the sports commission well in advance. As the other issue, sometimes they kind of catch wind of it, you know, a month before the event, and by then it's too late. So we'd like to sit down, get their information, create the room block, get it back to them months in advance of their event. So any help that you can give us with that, that will make a huge difference. And from a staff perspective, what we're going to do is, is as we meet with anyone that you fund in the next fiscal year, Scott and his staff will be at that inaugural meeting. Okay. We did not do that this past year, but again, that's water over the dam, and we had staffing and things, but Scott's here, and the ship is sailing. That's a great idea. Yeah. That's so, a great idea. Well, we'll do it correctly and then reevaluate. Um, Mr. Chairman, you said that we needed to produce, so I want to update you on some, <laughs> some new events. Obviously, we have our reoccurring events with the boxing and lacrosse and soccer and jamboree and Hall of Fame and all those, but uh, we're bringing back the donut run by popular demand. Uh, we've, <laughs> we've been asked a lot on Facebook, but we're making it better. We're actually, uh, when the challengers finish the 5K, they immediately eat, after they eat some donuts, they go on to a trail run obstacle course. So we're making it really unique. Oh, oh, um, <laughs> We have. I won't be at that. <laughs> I'll be won't, watching. We won't need the street sweeper. <laughs> no, they can they can do that in the woods. Carry uh, the police. <laughs> we've uh, we've created a new uh, partner with the East Coast All Stars. We've created a new basketball event uh, for this summer that we're expecting uh, approximately 40 teams on year one, and uh, so we're excited about that. That's that's uh, third grade through 11th, 12th grade teams. So, of course, you get the parents and all the grandmas and everybody that comes with that. Uh, in October, we'll be having a first time, uh, we're calling it Jack's Lax 7 versus 7 Lacrosse. That's a very popular growing sport. Um, and with that, unlike the quick stick, which is high school teams, this it, young kids all the way up through adults that play lacrosse. So we can have lots of different organizations there. Um, Glenn, you'll be excited to hear about this one. We, uh, we found out yesterday we're being considered uh, to be part of the Southern Stoke Paddle Series as part of New River Splash. So that would take place on that Saturday. And then on that Sunday, we'll have e even another new event that will still kind of fall under that New River Splash umbrella, so to speak. Uh, but looking at a duathlon, that would be a running and cycling event. And uh, so that, that'll be a great weekend. And then we're at, at discussions with four or five other uh, groups about new events for next year. Our goal is to do at least six new events in 2018. Thank you. And then last thing, I'll, I'll just kind of throw this out there just so it's on the radar. 
Um, we have filled out a survey to start discussions with a big name race that you've all heard of. If we were fortunate enough in the future to be awarded this race, um, we'll definitely be coming to talk to you financially, but uh, it would be a $3 million economic impact. Uh, the financial commitment on our behalf our, on, from our city uh, would be about $50,000, about 25 cash, 25 in kind. So again, down the road, but, but something to just put on the radar that we're at least going after it. Wonderful. Great I'll finish news. unless anyone has any questions. Cool. Where are the uh, basketball going to be held? Uh, we are using the Commons, Commons Middle, Jacksonville High, Northside High. Thank you. Lorette? Lorette's going to take Lorette? Yeah, I will fill in for Krista today. She is out uh, doing a multi-day fam tour with Laurie Rowe, which is a woman that works with travel writers. She's not just a travel writer. She has a network of travel writers. So thank you for all this gorgeous weather we've had the last few days. And the way I understand it, they had a ball yesterday on the bayonet. And once again, on the water. We keep talking about that that's probably our least utilized jewel in this community, so I'm glad to see it getting some press. Um, again, tourism has been very busy, um, and I'm sure Glenn's numbers are going to reflect this as well. Countywide, July through October, we're tracking about 7.4 percent ahead of last year on our occupancy tax, which is good. Um, on October 11th, we had the Visit NC group here in town, which is the tourism promotion group for the state, and they had a listening session there at the um, chamber, so we were thrilled to have them here. Um, on October 26, we had the Coast Host Meeting, which is our regional tourism group that promotes this whole part um, of the east coast of North Carolina, so we're still involved with that group. Um, and then on no just recently, November 16th, we had a group, and I'm sorry I'm not going to be able to give you the correct name of the sorority, but it was some women that were visiting Jacksonville, and she took them on a guided tour of some certain places of the African American Heritage Trail. And they were very impressed that they hadn't seen anything like that, and they enjoyed being part of that group. Um, I've got all the social media numbers. It's, you know, 28,000, 10,000. They're great. <laughs> They're wonderful. We'll just say that for that. So that is Kristen's report for today. Thank you. Good reports. Um, Alan, are you going to take the report, the collections? I think Glenn's going to do that. We can do this Glenn? quickly, sir. Okay. Basically, as she indicated, there is an uptick. This is with the first four months. We still have a couple of facilities not yet reporting. They'll be making their penalty payments to the school board as a result thereof. Good. But um, to the point there, we're 5% above where we were at the same time okay. um, last year um, for this for this matter there. And the same time, we are 5.3% above that county two-year trend. And you'll know that that is among the higher numbers that we have ever done. The Carolina Blue Line is the line that we are, the dark blue line in the background there. That's the line that uh, was our, our first year of operation. And the green line is that Onslow two-year trend that developed um, prior to the institution of the tax in the city of Jacksonville. So you can see that um, we are, we're, we're not charting what was happening in 1315, which was a very low uh, period of time there, as you know, that, that we are seeing an uptick at this time, and things are looking good from that perspective. So. Thank you. That is good news. Um, and as you all know that we always do before we close the one city moment, and I think today we're going to talk about the Remembrance Room. Yes, we want to just mention this to you. It, you we've talked about the impact of this, the, this, this, um, the, of the Heroes Mile. And we particularly talked about how people have a personal connection to it. And among that that we saw was how that people would have their picture made doing selfies out there when we did the Remembrance Run. And this is a widow um, that was there taking her picture with a friend at the site where her husband, who had passed in the Mississippi incident, was being, um, wow. you know, be honored in, all on the Hero Mile. And this is a picture of her there. I now want to have uh, them show you um, what, what she has done uh, with some of that um, awareness and how it's translated into making this a part of her life.
week after the funeral was when we found out that we were having the baby. It was just amazing because I knew Ryan wouldn't leave me alone. He wanted me to have a piece of him forever. All of the military service members in the picture were all part of Ryan's team, whether it be past or present. Cassie Lowry, <laughs> we do hereby appoint you impregnated by Ryan Lowry <laughs> and congratulate you on your soon-to-be new baby. I chose Veterans Day to do the reveal to honor my husband Ryan. Veterans Day is a big day every year for us, but this year it was extra special, and I wanted to honor her daddy now that we know it's a girl on this special day. We think that um, that's just part of the legacy of what it is that you're doing, and um, you know it brings us together as a community. She still lives in the area, and obviously is staying in the area and supported by those around her. A special place with special people. For sure. Board members, any comments before we close? Any reports? Anything you would like to see? Uh, the only thing I would echo is the importance of data collection and uh, really uh, helping these uh, entities uh, be more successful in the data collection and, and particularly interested in the meeting max. You know, I understand we've had some you know, bumps in the road, and I look forward to moving into the future with it. But the only thing I would suggest is that it's either going to work or it's not going to work. Okay. And if it's not going to work, we need to recognize it and move forward and maybe look at m maybe some other ideas or more current ideas. One of the things that we can all get very complacent and get used to in the past while things are moving rapidly forward and there's new ways of doing things so uh, I just encourage you to recognize that and, and make that happen if we, if we can. But if we're not moving forward and it's not what we envision, I don't, I'm not really interested in spending a lot of extra money on it if it's not working. We need to get outside the box and figure out is there something better or, or yeah, maybe. I believe the annual renewal each year is $1,500, so we don't want to waste that money no. if it's not. Not if there's a better way of doing it. So anyways, thank you all for your work. Thank you guys for being here a little bit longer as we have a lot to cover. We want to make sure that we're thorough in what we cover and that that, that we get everything out there. So thank you again. And I, don't, I don't have any further business. We'll Mr. Chairman, uh, I'd like to wish everybody in here a safe and happy holiday. And everybody that's uh, watching on TV, I'm sure we have thousands of people just tuned in. I would like to uh, to uh, wish a happy holiday season to everybody you. and your families and a safe one. I can't answer. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Meetings adjourned. So moved. Yep. So moved. Do it. So moved.